Welcome to another episode of the Dibbly Dobblers Cricket Podcast. As always, I am your main host, Callum. And as always, I am joined by the secondary host, producer, director, dinner lady, and whatever else. Bike carrying expert, Andrew. <laughs> that way I am this week. That's what you are this week. <laughs> yeah. You alright? How you doing? Not too bad. V- viewers, well, listeners won't notice, but viewers might notice that we're in slightly different settings this we week. We are, we are, yeah. We're all not right. in the kitchen. We're not in the kitchen. We're still in your premises, technically. So Yeah, we are. Um, we're in the corner of... A caravan ah. um, on holiday this I week. I mean, are we, can we now say we're an international podcast that we're recording in England now? Is that, <laughs> is that it? Can we, can we yeah, make that clear? <laughs> the international Devly Dobblers. That's it, you know. <laughs> we've made the big time. I mean, we're only just south of Berwick, so I mean, you can't get much more just over the border. Yeah, like my, my relatives who live in the south of Scotland are still further south than us. Ah, yes, yeah, so... <laughs> So yeah, so yeah. but so yeah, it's slightly different, but you know, committed to the cause. Absolutely. So, uh, we're still recording. Uh, we've got an interview coming up uh, with Glenn Rothis. Yeah. Um, which will take up the bulk of this episode because our wife. And that will send you back to our kitchen as well. Ah, well, so you might kitchen. get a bit confused. Um, Time so, travel. One. Ah, that's it. <laughs> but um, we were very prepared for for a change, and actually had an interview lined up, but. Uh, so just you'll only see our ugly mugs in this caravan for a short period of time. So Andrew, what's happening in the cricket world? What's coming up? Yeah, well, Scotland are playing over the next week. Um, yeah, there is a round of Cricket World Cup League Two fixtures. Yep. Um, so Scotland are playing Papua New Guinea and Oman. This round of fixtures, I believe, are meant to be hosted in Papua New Guinea yep. initially, but um, where are they? The Dubai. The uh, it was the UAE, UAE, certainly, I can't remember yeah. exactly what. Certainly, initially, they were out to Dubai. Yeah. Uh, but whether they're in Dubai or... Yeah. They probably are. They're probably at the Cricket Academy, aren't they? I would well, think. It's, yeah. yeah. But anyway, they're in the UAE. Um, so they're playing Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Um, Scotland. So two fixtures against Papua New Guinea, two fixtures against Oman. Really important to come away with this with four wins, I would say. It is, yeah. W- w- Scotland and I sitting in third place. Um, three wins... Will well, it'll go on a net run rate. Will be tied with the UAE, but they've played. They'll played a few more, a couple more games by the end of it. But yeah. a man currently sit top of the table. But a man have played way more games than anybody else. Yeah. So it, yes, they look like they're a country mile ahead. And okay, points on the board is a big thing. But I mean, I think it's not really showing the true picture of the the tournament so far. Yeah, I think this is potentially a man's last. They're certainly getting towards the end of their campaign. Have they played 28 or something? They've played 28 so I think it's 32 fixtures that you play. So I think this is their last round. Yeah, so I mean, Papua New Guinea have been the strugglers of the competition so far. They picked up their their first win in all their games and they have played, I think it's 18 so far. So it's not like they've played none. Um, Well, against the UAE in Nepal. Um, So, okay, they're fresh off that. But I still think Scotland have to be looking at two... Quite comfortable wins there, and I think Scotland have to be kind of brutal about it as well, and make sure it's two comfortable wins. You know, I know we've got guys who want to try out, but net run rate in these things can be crucial. So yeah, I think we've got absolutely. to go for the jugular. Um, and yeah, so the Oman one will be the trickier fixtures, conditions that are really somewhat like at home for Oman. So um, you'd imagine they've got a little bit of an advantage from that point of view. But Scotland have played a bit of comp- a bit of cricket out in that part of the world in recent times, so yep. hopefully that experience will count for something. Um, I don't know if it's getting streamed or anything. I don't know. You'd imagine somebody will be streaming it. You would oh, hope so, It'll be yeah. on ICC.tv. Oh, I hope not. So I would rather no one was streaming it than it was on ICC TV uh, because cut it's out. the same thing. Aye, it'll cut out 45 times. The commentators will have no idea who any of the players actually are. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. if it is ICT TV, just remember, we do a better job. Dibbly Dobblers, hit us up on YouTube or Twitter. We'll come. You can fly us out to the UAE. <laughs> It'll be a hardship, but we'll do it. Absolutely, yeah. Take one oh. for the team. But it's good to see, because this is the first in quite a, a number of games. Obviously, recently there was the announcement of the... The, the black caps coming across the Scots yes, as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and is it four? I think they've got four sets of these fixtures. Or is it five? Yeah, like four sets lined yeah. up over the, the um, summer, yeah. So two lots, at home, two away. Yeah, so lots of cricket. Um, I, think it, I think they're off to America after this. 
Yeah. And then two home ones and the black cap. So it's good to see plenty of cricket for Scotland because that's been a criticism. And another World Cup this year, is it? Yeah. So plenty of positive times ahead, but looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's time that we passed over to our interview and we'll uh, pass back to my kitchen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Live um, from the studio. Indeed. So, yeah, we've got an interview with Glenrothes Cricket Club, and this is slightly different to the other ones in that there are two representatives from Glenrothes on it. So, um, yeah, we've got Jay and Chris from Glenrothes, uh, and we'll pass you over to that interview just now. So we are joined by Jay Lewis and Chris Marshman, both from Glenrothes Cricket Club. Gents, how are you both? Not bad yourself? Yeah. Ah, not too bad. How are you getting on there, Chris? Yeah. Ah, doing all right. Bet the old, bet the old runner, that's why you're separated here tonight. Just a little bit, yes. <laughs> <I'll>, uh... Excuse <laughs> <laughs> you I just didn't want to sit with Jay. Jay. That's all it is. What's all... next to me? <laughs> <laughs> no more time speaking to him than absolutely necessary. <laughs> it works exactly. <laughs> Plus, we're going to meet at my house, and this way he doesn't know where I live. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> just... perfect solution. So Andrew, who have you got on this episode? I mean, who is this boy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, we'll jump into it. Um, so first question for you both then, I don't know how you're going to do this, if one of you is going to jump in or whatnot. Um, obviously, we've had a, last, a, a tough couple of years, everyone has, um, over the last couple of years. Um, but what sort of health um, is Glenrothes Cricket Club in at the moment? What's this kind of state of play at the club just now? This one, if you want, Jay. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to say we're coming out. We're coming out the other side of our own little dark spot. Um, I think, like most clubs, we weren't really certain how cricket was going to progress during the initial pandemic. So yeah. we kind of started off with a few kind of family fun sessions when we were allowed, and then started playing some some intra club games in July with a few kind of <clears throat> mixed adult and junior games, trying to get everyone involved. Uh, we were lucky enough that. Um, the Glenrothes Community Sports and Health Hub, who basically hosts us as a club, uh, waived our um, annual fee for ground rental. So we didn't charge any fees to members during that time. The only thing is, obviously, now we're back at the point where we do need to start charging membership again. So it's now going around and reminding people that, again, if we want the club to grow, continue, um, there has to be uh, yeah, an understanding that everyone has to pay their way. Yeah, yeah. So how are how are numbers and things looking at the moment? Are you having fairly healthy numbers just now? Surprisingly, I think yes. We... I think when you look at the pandemic, obviously it can sometimes make people go, okay, what? I don't want to do that. A lot of people may feel it's too much of a risk. But um, I think the good thing that we've had is the gladiator side of things, the youngsters are starting to get to the age where they can start playing more cricket. So they're starting to come to adult sessions and then people are getting groups of people who maybe have a family member who's starting to bring them along. And I think we managed to use this time quite well to promote because obviously we weren't doing stuff, but when we did have a session, we could promote it and we were getting people coming along. And I think the numbers, considering where we were at the start of the pandemic, I think are actually blossoming quite well at the moment. Good, good. Really uh, promising stuff to hear. Um, so I suppose, next question then. Um, what's going on at the club at the moment? So in a wider perspective, um, you got any big things happening? I'll take this one, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've recently just had an EGM uh, where we elected all our office bearers, which is quite good. We've had a couple of big kind of names around the club leave. Obviously, we've had people like Greg Hopcroft, who was our finance guy. He did, obviously, all the accounts for years, years. Before I was born, he was part of this club. So, <laughs> um, he, like, years. <laughs> <laughs> um, people like Kenny, who was a massive part. He took a lot of the, a lot of the stuff 
that was happening through the hub, especially is all really through Kenny. Um, yep. Ian Green, who did all the social kind of things, he was captain for years, and Chris, who was our groundsman. All them big characters who were part of the club for years and really put a lot of effort in and probably did too much for the club at points um, all left. So that, it was a time to maybe freshen things up. Um, we just, I think we just redid our constitution. It was quite good because our constitution was quite old. It was quite outdated. So that was part of our EGM as well. And it's really just working on kind of getting the club back on its feet, doing policies and procedures and stuff like that and working out memberships, all the all the boring logistical yeah, stuff that yeah. has to be done before the cricket season starts. But I think the good thing about it is we can now see the path. The path isn't all jumbled up. We know which way where we're going. Um, obviously, with the season coming up, we've got a couple of friendlies coming up at the end of the season. We've got them planned as by the end of the month, sorry. So that's coming up as well. So we're kind of on a good path now from where it was a bit jumbled up. We didn't really know who was doing what, what we're doing. We've kind of we've settled all in our roles now and we can now move on to the season. Hopefully all the boring stuff's done except <laughs> playing cricket, which is quite good. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that probably resonates with a lot of clubs around the country that there are a, a few, only a few bodies really probably carrying most of the load for the club. So I suppose yeah. sounds quite good that I've kind of seen some of your tweets out about mm -hmm. it and things that I seem to have a few folk doing and having clearly yeah. defined roles, which I suppose lightening that load for everybody and not burning out should hopefully be a good thing. Yeah, that was a, that's was that been a quite an issue for the club over the years. It's maybe some people have been taking on too many roles, which is maybe they don't turn up to cricket on a Saturday to play cricket. They turn up to run things and it's, yep. it's never really been that obviously great in the way it's been run. So it's good that we can get the refresh and get everyone doing their own roles so that people aren't doing much, like too much and everyone gets an input on every role. We all have our specific roles, but it doesn't mean that we're going to be doing that role alone. There's still going to be people helping as well. So it's kind of, it feels like there's a lot less workload on people, which is good as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, it sounds excellent. I'm sure it's maybe something that other clubs might be able to see um, and maybe follow suit with, you know, maybe look for pointers, because I'm sure there are a few committees out there, as I say, we'd like to lighten their loads. Um I stepped down from playing and it's like, there you go, here's all the admin. Have yeah. that to do. Works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so season ahead then, um, obviously it's not very far away. What what are the club's ambitions for the year ahead? I mean, I think realistically where, I think there was a point a few years ago when Glenrothes became very much a, an all about winning culture. You know, there was that point where there were four teams out on a Saturday, which is great. But <clears throat> I'm not saying people were necessarily playing for the wrong reasons. But things happened. We are where we are now. And we're trying to consistently be a club that can put out two teams on a Saturday. People can turn up and enjoy playing cricket, have fun. Um, we're really keen on building a kind of fun, friendly and a family atmosphere. So obviously our first team... We'd love to improve on our record for the last season. You know, we, we got two wins towards the end of the season, but we'd like to be a bit more consistent. There were a couple of games that slipped out of our grasp. And really our second team <clears throat> is very much a development 11. We're looking to try and roll out some of the some of the older members of the club, maybe, to help <laughs> give some of the juniors a bit of match experience. Alternatively, I can always drop Jay as well if we're desperate. <laughs> I know the one that was coming in. <laughs> Yeah, because I suppose I, I, I used to umpire and I saw Glenn Rothis, uh, did, did uh, quite a few games for Glenn Rothis when they were up in the, in the EPL and things like that. So obviously, kind of on the field, as, you know, obviously things have been a bit more difficult, less teams and things like that. But um, it's good to see that you guys appear to certainly be kind of starting to rebuild and come out the other end of that because it as someone looking in from the outside it kind of did look like a club that actually was like oh right is there going to be a club anymore because it kind of went from way up here just to all of a sudden kind of dropping so it's um do you feel like you guys are coming out the other end of that then um i think there was a point where the club kind of forgot what it was about like it started off obviously a family club 
bunch of friends just enjoying playing cricket. Yeah. And then yeah. as it got more serious, the players that got us there were getting pushed down a bit and it wasn't necessarily about being at the club because you wanted to be at the club because you like the club and because you want to play cricket. It was like being there partly since like a job. Um, so I think I think we needed to go down to come back up again. I think we needed that kind of go down, get the more family based kind of atmosphere around the club, get the guys who want to come play on a Saturday, not because they have to, because they want to. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is a big part of the cricket. I mean, I played, I think I played two games when we were in the Premier League and it was horrible. <laughs> Admittedly, I was 17 and I had heard a bat for two years. I was standing there like, <laughs> um, but the atmosphere was totally different from going and playing on a Saturday with your mates and it was just good fun even if you lost you had a laugh it was good to be there to play in so seriously I think the club kind of lost its way a bit I think it's good that we're coming back to the whole family, friends, laugh enjoying cricket rather than a job yep. I mean I think as well I think I would like to say that the low point or the lowest point of the club was probably the kind of middle of last season, the point where we were questioning whether we were going to put two teams out this year or not. Um, <clears throat> realistically, with our committee, we I think it's a roughly 10 positions on the committee, and I think eight of them have changed since the end of last season. So mm. I'd like to think if we were going to fold as a club or continue to struggle, it would have been then. I think we're kind of coming yeah. through the other side now and we can build up a bit more. Oh, and, as is, and to be honest, it's, yeah, the fact you've managed to get eight different people, that's I don't think many other clubs could actually do that, in fairness to you guys. So I think that's almost credit in that in its in itself. So well, it was good to hear though. And I think the fact you've kept an uh, is it uh, is it R and D, is it your twos? Are they playing on the Sunday? Is it or is it two Saturday teams? Sorry. I no, it's two Saturday teams. teams. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's excellent. So, I mean, that's there's not a lot of clubs out there necessarily imagine that as well. So, sounds like you're on to something good still. So, shall we touch on the who who's going to be the big performers for next season? Yeah, or let's, this coming season. Let's well. do that. Right. So, <laughs> oh, Jay's got his hands up. He, he's going to do it all. It's, not, it's me. Uh, it's me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who's going to be your leading run scorer this year? I don't want to blow too much smoke up his rear end, but I believe the gentleman on the call here, Chris, um, started to get a couple of good batting spells towards the end of the season. I think he's going to continue it. I think his confidence has grown massively over the last year. I had the pleasure of batting with him at the end of the season for ages. We put on like a 70-run partnership. He did score 61 of them, but we put on a 70-run partnership. So I think... The other nine extras, were they? Yeah, I think a couple of our leg buys. I got out trying to sweep a ball that was never should have been swept. That, that's just me to a T. <laughs> but I think I think Chris um, is on a good roll for um, in terms of batting. He's been batting really well. Also have um, Annie as well as one of our batsmen who again started to come into a bit of form. So they are the two I would say who definitely would be the top runners for the batsmen. And what about with the ball? Yeah, I think the only other one. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> if you've got another name to add to that, Chris? No. No, I just don't like maybe being talked about in that way. I went through seven years of not being able to score on if I tried, and suddenly last season something clicked. Um, <laughs> don't get used to it. But I've been, an, <laughs> I've been an opening bowler for the last seven years, so that's just <laughs> unusual. But no, um, with the ball, um, it was kind of myself, between myself and uh, Rayon Thomas last year for lead wicket taker, and I'd... I'd like to put some money on him to to beat me comfortably this year. Um, he's a good left arm spinner. He does also open the batting as well. Um, and with us having lost Andy Moody, our ridiculous run machine from last year, no. um, I think he'll I think he'll stand up with that and ball. I, I did actually wonder if Moody was away um, because yeah, kind of it seemed like every weekend. You were like, oh, right, that's another ton or an 80 or whatever. Yeah. It was just like, wow, wish I could Andy, do that. <laughs> yeah, Andy has moved the way to South Africa. Unfortunately, we were, we were begging him to stay, but apparently his family's more... Jay, you really cricket, put so. people off, don't you? I mean, this boy's moved all the way to South <laughs> yeah. Africa. 
<laughs> I came back and played one game with him. He decided he was leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I played one game with him. And I'd like to point out the one That's game I played never spent a ton. <laughs> I don't know what it Ironically was. enough, actually, the, yeah, the two games we actually won last year were the games that Andy didn't score a ton. All right. So a bit of a curse. I think he then. scored six of them. And well, I think it, it, is... he ended up with something ridiculous like 850 runs at an average of 106. Mm-hmm. And then he won two games because we just weren't up to it, I don't think. I don't think we had that. Didn't have a consistent enough 11 for a start. But mm-hmm. I don't think I'll see think... another batsman quite like that. Yeah. Andy, Andy was a different level. He was a. Uh... It's a shame because he he wasn't he was just a nice guy and he was he enjoyed playing cricket and his family used to come up and watch it was just a really good atmosphere when he was there he was just a good player. It's a shame <laughs> he's gone. Yeah. But hey, but. Chance for someone else to shine though I'm sure. Yes, um, speaking of that, I would say that we've got a youngster. His name's Charlie Charlie Barton and he's I don't know how old he is now. I forget. I think he's like 15 and he's got all the shots in the book. He can bowl. And I think he's one to keep an eye on. He's got such good awareness for someone so young. I mean, I remember when I when I was his age, I was as erratic as like as if I could get the ball on the pitch, I'd be happy. Like, <laughs> like when I was his age. So to see having so, so someone so composed and who can take pressure quite well, right? It's yeah. great. The only thing I will say is his decision making for when making runs probably isn't the best, but. That'll come that's, with time. that's something to be learned, though, isn't it? I mean, if he's got the fundamentals, yeah. then you would hope yeah. that that will come. Well, it can't be any worse. Than, can't really. be worse than Andrew's running because I mean, it's diabolical. <laughs> we just finished up an indoor tournament, and oh my word, Andrew, what was your running about, mate? I was fine. It was always the partner's fault. Oh, always, <laughs> always, uh, always is. It always. Is. I got told I'm an optimistic runner. <laughs> <laughs> that was by yeah. his mum. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. But that's good that you've got young talent coming through and especially yeah. if you can handle pressure because I think a lot of clubs maybe have a guy or, or a girl who is very talented but maybe the, the head isn't screwed on so that's something promising sounds like. I think yeah. the good thing for Charlie is that he well his dad plays so he plays with his dad and I think he just likes the fact that he's there and obviously I've had the, obviously the pleasure of I'm a family friend and I've been playing with Charlie went to, since he was 10 and he's uh, just to see his improvement is it's massive um, but yeah it's good it's good that he's learning so quickly and able to progress as quickly as he can I think he just enjoys playing with his dad as well I think it's always good to have your dad there watching you and having your back the whole way through it as well so that's good. yeah absolutely I'm sure his dad enjoys that in the reverse as well so Right. His dad's happy that he doesn't have to do as much now because he knows his son's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's fine, I get none, you get 50, it's cool. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> right, um, you got anything else? No, uh, you might do all the research, Andrew. Come on, mate, I'm just here to talk. <laughs> we've, we've talked about this before. <laughs> no, um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. I think that, that kind of is everything that, that we wanted to cover. Have you guys got anything else that, that you want to get out there? Join Glen Roth as cricket yeah. club. When do you train? <laughs> when do you, when and where and when do you net? Oh, they don't so know. normally we're uh, <laughs> Wednesday evening. <laughs> when we go outside, we'll probably be uh, starting outdoor training in the next three weeks or so. Um, we'd normally be at the Gelvin Bank Hub, or as it is now, sorry, Glen Roth Sports and Health Hub. Um, <laughs> it's normally... Half six on a Wednesday. Half six on Wednesdays from the middle of April. Get yourself down there if you're in the Glen Rock area. I must ask about Gilman. If, if, do you still well, have cars that just like to drive across the square and things like that? Or is all that? It's stuff mostly stuff? motorbikes and quad bikes now. Oh. <laughs> and kids running over with football boots. Like, they'll see the pitch and they'll go walk straight through the middle of it and you're like, and we've watched them do it. And we were sitting there, the, we're actually sitting there at the weekend when we're doing a work stable, we're cleaning cutting the grass and I was literally cutting around the square and the football game finishes and you just fail across and you're like why? You can see we're doing some ground. I think you need some fencing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so um, as I said, thank you very much both of you for joining uh, us this evening. Uh, it's been 
appreciate it. Um, and yeah, best of luck for the season ahead. Uh, and hopefully we'll catch up with you at some point during the year as well. Yeah, cheers for coming on, guys. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks again to Jay and Chris for joining us for that interview. And um, we hope you all enjoyed that. Cal? Yeah, cheers to the guys. And uh, yeah, looking forward, you know, to spanking spanking you guys at some point during the season, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, two good lads. So cheers for coming on. Really appreciate that, guys. <laughs> right. I think that uh, brings us to the end of this episode. A fairly brief one, actually, this week. Um, Maybe some viewers will thank us for that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, they'll be like, oh, Callum's not drawn on and on and on and on. <laughs> so, yeah, um, just the usual, uh, get us on Twitter at DibDobPod. Um, like, share, and subscribe the, the video on YouTube um, or on whatever platform you're listening on as well. Um, and, yeah, we will uh, we'll speak to you again next week. See you.